He's the voice of Fox, CBS, and practically every movie trailer you've ever seen. He's the nicest sponge under the sea. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Chip Red. A new CSI New York, Friday, 9, 8 central, only CBS. But when he's not articulating with great care every sound and syllable from inside the recording booth, he uses his voice to fight for equality as an LGBT and human rights activist. It's truly an honor to have Ben Patrick Johnson from Los Angeles, California. Ben, thanks for taking the time today. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. You know, I'm such a fan of what you do, and um, gosh, I'm so proud of you for having uh, this outlet and just all of the media you create. And I think the you're a great example of what a young person can do, harnessing both social and traditional media to... Uh, ask questions, to open eyes, and to, um, in your own way, make this world a better place. So thank you for having me today. Well, thanks. I really appreciate it. Um, but let's go back to last Friday, the Supreme Court decision. Um, they ruled that same-sex marriage is legal in all 50 states. Uh, what was your initial reaction to that, Ben? I wasn't surprised. People said, did you have any, were you surprised? No, I expected this. I wanted it. Um, I'm happy with the 5-4. Uh, decision uh, split with the justices. I would have liked a 6-3, but it was something that's been a long time coming, and it's just the culmination of so many years of work by so many people. And uh, what I felt Friday more than anything else was just pure joy. Joy and a sort of the happy fatigue a person gets at the end of a marathon when you've crossed the finish line. You're exhausted, but you're just, you're elated to be where you are. Unfortunately, Ben, a lot of people weren't uh, thrilled with the decision. A lot of them were, um, you know, very hostile towards the decision. Do you think that's just a clash with their religious beliefs or is it something more deep seated? What's your take on that? Well, first, let's define a lot, because one thing that has changed dramatically in recent years and even as we've seen uh, polls moving in recent months is that, uh, yes, there were an, uh, many people who were, but it was a clear minority. Who, who opposed the decision made by the Supreme Court and a, an even um, stronger minority who now oppose uh, same-sex marriage. So among those people, traditionally, it would be political and religious conservatives. Those who I've heard most outspoken are the religious conservatives. And I think it's a combination of things. I think uh, there is a certain sincere clash with uh, long-held beliefs of theirs, but also I think there's just, uh, there's this dogged determination that we human beings get when we entrench in a position, even if it's a position that's no longer useful to us um, and is beginning to erode and, and chip away, uh, we will hang on to it doggedly. And I think that it's a combination of those two things. But I do think that um, Evan Wolfson, I saw speaking, uh, uh, director of Freedom to Marry, which will soon be a disbanded organization because they're saying goal accomplished. But he was talking on uh, CNN or was it to MSNBC yesterday about the work that still lies ahead and just because we have this uh, mandate from the Supreme Court does not mean that we are all the way where we need to be. We got here by winning hearts and minds and engagement and as Evan likes to say there is no marriage without engagement so it remains our job to attempt to engage those who, who are still resisting us. I don't think the right answer is to bulldoze. I don't think the right answer is to shove stuff down people's throat. I think that um, we now have clearly the uh, judicial and the popular majority, as well as the legislative branch, excuse me, as well as the executive branch of federal government is with us. If we need to do something further in the legislature, we will do that. But the votes should be there. Um, and uh, I think we'll get where we need to be. And again, we still need to convince people in their hearts and in their minds to, to be on board with us. Certainly, a lot of progress does still need to be made, but what do you think are the overall implications of this decision in the LGBT community? Obviously, legalizing same-sex marriage, but my way of thinking is that maybe by sort of normalizing this homosexuality, and I don't mean that to sound uh, in a negative way, but perhaps by doing that, it'll be easier for people to come out of the closet, for example, and uh, you know, perhaps suicide rates would decline because it won't be as taboo to be gay. Um, what are your thoughts on that? What are the other implications? I agree with you completely on that one, Andrew. Um, I think you, you said normalizing, I think also legitimizing. 
Uh, and as we've seen this uh, outpouring of support from, from the president and from major corporations and everyone, it's getting, it's a better day to be gay in America and to be out and gay in America than it was, you know, crack of dawn last uh, Friday morning. Uh, I think, I agree with you. I think we will see uh, suicide rates drop. I think we will see more people coming out. I'm approached frequently uh, in social media by uh, young people and uh, older people uh, struggling with the coming out process. And I've seen in the appeals and the emails and such I'm getting, uh, there is a tangible shift since last Friday. Now, again, we still live in a country where uh, in many states you can go get married to a person of the same sex on a Friday and then on Monday morning be fired from your job for that same reason. So we do have a long way to go uh, in, in terms of job protections and equal opportunity. But in terms of what you're talking about, which is the emotional and, and, and mental uh, place that we find ourselves, I think that the implications of this Supreme Court decision will be far-reaching and the benefits will be manifold. Ben, as you alluded to, and respectfully, you're gay. Uh, what do you say to people who might tell you, you know, it was your choice to be gay? Uh, you know, what's your take on that? That's just simply not so. Uh, you wouldn't know unless you walked in my shoes, and, and you don't. Uh, not you, but the person I'm speaking to. So please speak from your own knowledge and I will speak from my own. Right, uh, you know, I think gay people chose to be gay as much as I chose to be heterosexual, but uh, from my experience, Ben, it seems like the younger generations in this country and in the world are more accepting and tolerant of the LGBT community. Clearly um, so. Yeah, you know, what do you attribute that to? Well, I think that uh, with any social movement, we've seen that, uh, wh whether it was interracial marriage or uh, discrimination against uh, blacks or, or other groups. People that are younger tend to be a little more open-minded, sometimes a lot more open-minded. As we grow older, uh, our, our values and our beliefs tend to calcify and tend to become more rigid. Not that that can't be changed and moved. We've seen many instances of uh, both public officials as well as uh, countless within our own families and uh, other social structures, older people uh, slowly growing and being able to uh, kind of get with the program, but it's much easier for younger people too. And obviously, um, I assume you have, have seen the sort of poll polling numbers that I've seen, uh, both as you said in the United States as well as globally, that young people are wholly on board with the uh, LGBT uh, equality and I was going to say agenda, but that's, that sounds so negative. Just guess, getting our basic rights and getting respect. If um, if we if the only people who were allowed to vote were people 50 and under, this would be over and done with. We wouldn't even really need to be having this conversation. Totally. Ben Patrick Johnson, author, voiceover actor and LGBT and human rights activist. Thanks so much for joining me this afternoon. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me on.